By the time it comes to writing the evaluation and the application sections to your assignment, you're probably slightly on the exhausted side with all of this writing, but don't give up at this point. Between these two sections, there are nine marks available for your assignment. To gain the highest marks in the discussion and evaluation section, the marking criteria states that the student's report evaluates the conclusion, discusses strengths, weaknesses and limitations, and suggests modifications that can be made. It's really important to know what the word evaluate means. The ESS guide defines it as make an appraisal by weighing up the strengths and limitations. Let's see how we do that here. The first step is to evaluate the conclusion in the context of the environmental issue. Basically ask yourself, how good is your conclusion at contributing to our knowledge of the environmental issue? Depending on the nature of your assignment, you might want to consider how strong is the correlation? Is there statistical significance, which is relevant if you did some stats to analyse your data? Think about whether the conclusion fully applies to the environmental issue you presented. Have you identified every pattern in the data? Is it possible that there are any contradictory patterns, for example? There are probably more you can think of as well, but these ideas should get you started. Let's look at an example. We'll use the investigation on air pollution I mentioned in a previous video. The research question was, how does distance from the R82 highway in Johannesburg, South Africa, correlate with the concentration of particulate matter in the air? And the method involved collecting data along a gradient moving away from the road. The environmental issue would be something along the lines of cars being a source of air pollution which is damaging to humans and ecosystems, and so being in close proximity to roads may be problematic. Let's say we get these results, showing a good correlation with air particulate matter concentration decreasing as we move up to a kilometre away from the road. A simple conclusion we might come to is, as distance from the road increases, the concentration of air particulate matter decreases we're going to have a go at evaluating that conclusion. Let's look again at our list and we'll start with the idea of the strength of the correlation. And remember, we had quite a good one. So part of our conclusion might read, the results show a strong negative correlation between concentration of particulate matter and distance from the highway. The strength of the correlation indicates that it can be reliably inferred that exposure to air pollutants increases with closeness to the road, posing a risk to organisms. That first part is simply evaluating our conclusion, while the second part puts that evaluation in the context of the environmental issue. That bit, linking back to the environmental issue, is essential for the highest marks. As an aside, when you discuss a correlation, this might be a good place to mention statistical significance if you did the relevant stats test in your analysis. Next, we might make a statement on how well the conclusion applies to the environmental issue. For this one, let's remind ourselves of where we collected data. If we look at a map of the surrounding area, we might see that, in addition to going past the school, the road runs through a central business district, a residential area, and then on through a rural area. The sample area selected is just this section nearby the school. Is my conclusion really applicable to the whole highway? Maybe the trees or buildings have some sort of absorbing effect on air pollution. Who knows? To evaluate, I might state that the conclusion is only applicable to a single small area, though the pattern may be different in other locations, such as residential or rural zones, limiting our knowledge on the effect of distance to the highway and exposure of air pollutants to organisms. Again, I've evaluated the conclusion and done that in the context of the environmental issue. Next step in the criteria is to discuss the strengths, weaknesses and limitations of the method. It all depends on your method, but to get you started, ask yourself, has bias been removed or minimised? Are your averages reliable? What level of precision does your apparatus have? Is the secondary data, if you used any, taken from a reliable source? Does the experiment represent reality? Would you get the same results at a different time of day or year? I'm sure there are lots of others you could think of. The last part here is suggesting modifications. I can't guide you with what to write here because what you write is so specific to your assignment, but I can give you some guidance on what not to write. Don't say things like, I'll be more careful next time. Better apparatus is needed. Next time I'll follow the teacher's advice. I'll do repeats. The key point here is that your suggestions must address significant weaknesses, and you'll need to be quite specific about it. 
The last thing to do with your conclusion is to consider how you could apply what you've learned to improve the situation somehow. The marking criteria shows that you have to justify an application or solution to the environmental issue. Not only that, you also have to evaluate it. Obviously, the application or solution you suggest depends on your conclusion and environmental issue, but here are some ideas. Is there a pollution management strategy that you could present? Or maybe your conclusion suggests that some sort of conservation strategy would be effective. You might want to recommend a strategy for educating people with a view to minimising the problems you've discussed. Maybe some sort of taxes or financial incentives could improve the situation. Or perhaps you could propose improvements to infrastructure, like improving public transport to reduce emissions. There are a wide range of possibilities, but make sure your suggestion is relevant to the environmental issue discussed in the context, and that it relates to the findings of your study. It's also important that you justify your application or solution by explaining why it will be effective, how your study supports it. Lastly, don't forget to evaluate your application or solution. For the strengths, think about the possible positive outcomes. Perhaps your strategy requires employees, so results in job creation. Maybe it would result in an increase in the population of a species, or a reduction in pollution. For the weaknesses and limitations, think, what are the drawbacks? Maybe people might be reluctant to make a change. Perhaps your solution is very expensive. Or maybe it'll take a long time to observe any benefits from your idea. 